Thank you very much, uh, David, for the updates there in business. Let's head into the papers now, see what the headlines are across Nigeria. But have with me in the studio to do justice to this, a lecturer from the University of Lagos, Dr. Danny Kere, as well as in-house analyst, Obani Akinwale. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you. Good, good nice morning. To see you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Let's begin with the Blueprint newspaper this morning. And it says uh, it's focusing on $9.6 billion judgment against Nigeria. It says PNID would have seized our assets globally if, as the federal government is uh, giving a breakdown of some of the consequences that could have, uh, you know, come up. But they, they say we are doing everything possible to upturn a verdict. And Nigeria can demand $200 million refund. Uh, the minister is uh, saying that, uh, the minister of uh, uh, justice. All right, from the blueprint, let's go to the news direct. <coughs> The news direct says Senate goes tough on kidnappers and banditry. Yeah, the National Assembly uh, is looking into these issues right now. From there, the Daily Trust is our next paper right now and is focusing on some of the goings on in the universities. How lecturers shuttle to teach in new universities. All right, it gives a breakdown of uh, if you see the, the, the picture uh, news there, it talks about the federal numbers of federal universities, state universities, and private universities in the country, and the breakdown by region. It's a really interesting read, I must say, and uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping this will interest uh, Dr. Kerry in the house as well. This day is the next uh, paper we see now. Stay of execution, evidence of strong case against PNID, says the federal government, and appeals $200 million security for stay. It insists PNID bribed Nigerian officials with billions of naira to secure failed deal. All right, that's uh, what you see on this day. All right, from there, let's go to the Vanguard newspaper now. Uproar as federal government returns toll gates to federal roads. It's insensitive and anti-people, the PDP is saying this. No reason to bring back toll gates, uh, Kako, uh, an organization is saying this. Government being unfair, ex-MBA vice chair is saying this. And you can't raise VAT, bring back toll gates at the same time, Advocacy <laughs> Center is saying this. Because all of that, Nigerians are the ones to pay. That's what you see on the front page of the Vanguard. Daily Sun is where we go next now. Alleged pension fraud. EFCC detains Mena after DSS arrest. An ex-director son pulled pistol to stall father's arrest. Security agencies are revealing this uh, to Nigerians on the front page of the Daily Sun. All right, uh, gentlemen, I think the story that will interest you and interest Nigerians the most right now is the one on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper where they talk about the return of the tolls. Uh, the Minister of uh, uh, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashala, was addressing the press and he was talking about the likelihood, the plan, uh, what it would look like to return uh, the tolls so that... Uh, uh, you know, it's going to be a new face, but the way it is painted, it's, it looks like uh, it's going to be a new way, a new approach, and certainly a new way of executing and implementing uh, the funds from uh, the toll, if, if at all. Talk to us, Obani. What do you think about this? How does this come to you? Uh, mixed, mixed feelings. First is, uh, if you look at the history of governor, uh, former governor, Bato uh, Shola, there was a joke that was cracked sometime, and he said, after you've gone to visit uh, Ashwa Jibala Metinubu, he will say, uh, go and see him. But when you go to see Fashola, the next thing you wear is that, have you paid your tax? Mm. So <laughs> and if you look at the history in Lagos, Fashola is synonymous to toll fees. And uh, it's so unfortunate that we are ripping off the poor to pay the rich in this country. Uh, I don't want to know how to want to explain if we have crop of 109 senators buying 50 million worth of SUVs and you have a couple of guys that are unable to even have a dollar to feed themselves a day, and we are putting this burden on them. Let's also ask ourselves, when President Obasanjo and Jonathan decided to re remove the toll fee, what we told them was that certain amount of that money is already added to the cost of the fuel. When this government came on power, we were told that in order for us not to subsidize fuel, we have to increase the digit from 97 naira to 145. Now coming this day and time, to say we are going to increase the money to 145 is not only disheartening, it's an embarrassment of the Nigerians. Then again, I think what we're seeing is the, uh, is the voice of Jacob, the hand of Esau. Uh, if you look at the case of the so-called economic team that we're calling, 
Oshibajo is more humanitarian. Oshibajo is more populist. Now, when you are, I'm sorry to say that the crop of guys we have, they are good economics, but they are capitalists to the core. And the capitalist economy, uh, you will always milk society to fund the system. So what we are beginning to see is, yes, the government wants to work, but is there no way government can cut waste stages in all these parastatas, the number of aids? I was reading about the governor that sacked almost 198. Somebody has about 258. You look at the number of personnel that they have all around them. Why can't we make savings from this? We are planning to increase tax. So what they have done now is that they have used one hand to give workers 30,000 naira mm. and use the other hand, hand to too. rob them off. <laughs> while letting tax all right. And the now, so do, do, Dr. Ekere, the all of these things, if, if, if they work the way it is written on paper that they are going to work, I don't think Nigerians will have too much issues with them. But if the government decides, now, you know what, this time around we want to do it right, mm -hmm. uh, does it not require the support of Nigerians to make things work? Yeah, thank you. I, I, that would have been good if what you call government, you know, is a set of people who are humans. Mm -hmm. You know, but we, we, we yeah. Are, they, are you saying they're not humans? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Okay. No, no, look, look at it. You see, people with humane mind, okay. all right, who are concerned about their fellow men. <laughs> look, look at the whole event. You, clearly, we know that Fashola being the minister of works, you know, these are the kind of things you expect. It happened in Lagos. We, uh, we saw it clearly. You know, but the unfortunate thing is that... But, th is, th but this is not about Fashola necessarily. It's about the government. It's what okay, the, he's okay, just okay. doing the no, bidding of who, the, of the who government. Who is doing the bid? Who brought this idea? Who, who is, is the, the minister? Who, is, who, who, who projected policy? this policy? Can he, can he, can, can, he, can he fly without the president giving a nod to it? What is, you see, there's a difference between giving a nod and bringing the idea at all. Somebody will muted the idea. And I have my doubts if Buhari was the one who brought this idea. This must be Fashola's idea. So... Is the same, you know, no spirit. But again, look at it very carefully. In Nigeria, we do know for sure that the rich don't pay tax. So, is it a question? Many of, of the rich don't. No, most, except <laughs> the ones who are in government, <laughs> those who are working, that they can easily but deduct at some. Because and those are, who work in private, there are actually a lot even of so many of these private tax. organizations, mm. as big as they are, they collect the taxes of the workers, but they are never remitted. And the government is not able to do anything about that. Is the poor people on the road that they want to deal with? Because at the end of the day, whatever increment you make through the tax you are going to collect by way of uh, tolls is the, the commuters that will eventually pay the money. You know, because the driver is not going to run at a loss. Okay? You've increased the price of uh, pump price of oil and all the rest. You are just looking for ways to make money for the private individual. If the idea is to actually see how we can save money. Every four years we keep buying SUVs mm -hmm. for the same set of people. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been there since 99. The same set every four years. Now, on their own, on their own, do they buy cars in that manner? <laughs> so you look at it. Yeah, that is, is, that how to, is that how to run an economy? Are you telling us we don't have funds? Mm -hmm. Obviously, the problem on Nigeria is not funds. All right. Because from what we are seeing, it's clear that some set of passengers want to unleash, you know, you know pains okay. on the common man. O Obani, the one concern here, even if we have to take it beyond the issue of uh, returning the tolls and all of that, mm -hmm. one concern here is the issue of policy somersault. Mm -hmm. At one time, Nigerians were convinced this was the best option, mm -hmm. and then it was implemented. Mm -hmm. At another time, they said, no, considering all factors, mm -hmm. we are jettisoning the, the idea of toll gates and never to return in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then after some years, we're coming back to it again. What does this tell about the ups and downs and left and it, right of It uh, is policies? not policy somersault. Okay. Uh, Nigeria is, is a system whereby one week, one trouble. Now, you can be very sure that before the end of this week, there will be another tantrum from the government. Now, in order to distract the masses from what they intend doing, this is just what will be the political discourse, and that's what exactly what they are trying to do. Mm. So, for me, uh, we, we seem not to, like you said, we seem not to have a government that is humane. And until we get to that point where they consider the masses, consider the citizens, consider their pockets and their sort of livelihood, Look at how many number of people we have that are jobless. Okay. And you begin to put this more prayer on the system. And you okay. say you want to reduce kidnappers and banditry? 
We'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, we, we, we're getting some reports, informal reports here and there that Nigeria Labour Congress is saying no, we will not accept We don't the have issue a Labour Congress. But, but we don't. <laughs> let's we wait don't to have see. a Labour Congress. Let's wait to see how these things uh, play out. Obani Akinwale, thank you very much for coming. Play Dr. Danekere, thank you very much as well. Thanks for thank having Thank you. It's time to take a look at stories making the headlines in Nigeria newspapers. I have with me in the studio a lecturer at the University of Lagos, Dr. Danekere. An in house analyst, Obani Akinwale. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on TVC Breakfast. Thank you, it's a pleasure. All right, we head straight to the papers now, and I begin with the blueprint. $9.6 billion judgment. PNID would have seized our assets globally if, for the government, we are doing everything possible to obtain verdict. Nigeria can demand $200 million refund, Minister. And on the front page of News Direct, Senate goes tough on kidnappers' banditry. We'll be looking at that story shortly. Well, on the front page of the Daily Trust, how lecturers shuttle to teach in new universities. And we have an uh, infograph of uh, their movement from federal states to other private universities. And on the front page of uh, this day, stay of execution, evidence of strong case against PNID, says federal government. Appeals to $100 million security for stay, insists PNID bribe Nigerian official with billions of Naira to secure field deal. And to the vanguard now, uproar as the federal government returns toll gates to federal roads. It's insensitive, anti-people, PDP, no reason to bring back toll gates, Kako, a government being unfair, ex-NBA vice chair. You can't raise VAT, bring back tolls, toll gates at same time, advocacy center. And finally, on the front page of the Daily Sun, alleged pension fraud, EFCC detains Mayna after DSS arrest. Ex-director's son pulled a pistol to, staff, to stall father's arrest, security agency. All right, gentlemen, I'd like for us to look at the story on the front page of News Director, the Senate uh, going tough, according to the, the, how it is written on the front page, on kidnappers and banditry. The Senate is looking at, uh, well, being perhaps taking proactive steps. And it's looking at reviewing our security architecture. You know, gentlemen, that uh, our security profile uh, at this moment is uh, really nothing to write home about, as some have put it. But then what do you make of uh, the Senate move at this time or at this point? I'll start with you. Me. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that I see most is that I would rather prefer us turning our national chambers to <laughs> comic theater. <laughs> How so? Uh, I don't seem to see any seriousness in the National Assembly. Uh, with reference of humility and not being too harsh on them. But this is a serious matter. How, let's, let's start first. How do you curb the kidnapping and banditry in areas where there is no good road? Mm. Where, there, where there is not accessible? Where, as at the moment, community policing is nothing to write home about? Where the state governors are unable to pay salaries to workers? Where 30,000 Naira has become a problem, where we're expecting 7.5 watts and uh, toll gates. So how do you justify a 369 member of the parliament collecting as much as 150 billion out of the entire budget? But they can and stand the by amending the laws. Which law? The first law to amend is to stop wastage from the National Assembly and make it a part-time job. See, the moment you place a National Assembly officer on the salary level of a level 14 officer, you will see that this country will work well. The first is it, you, it, yes. Is it about the salaries or about it, the It's issues? about the wastage in the system because you could imagine every oversight function, they will collect money. Hmm. They are relocating to Abuja, they will collect money. They are having conference, they will collect money. And a, a man on the street cannot even afford 18,000 Naira a month. Hmm. There are states that the government is still owing them as much as... 18 months, six months. Now you are now saying, I will, even it's possible for those states to, parents will be kidnapping their children and will go to government and say they have kidnapped us. You saw it already happening. Absolutely. So when you have a system whereby the rich always want to continue to get richer, how many security details are attached to the every officers in the National Assembly? How many is attached to you and I? The entire police force is less than 300,000. Yet 
most of our politicians has one DSS, one military, one civil defense. Even a chairman of a local government will have a civil defense, a police officer, a military officer, possibly a DSSS, and somebody from Israel. And yet you and I, that doesn't even have three square, or let me say for myself, that doesn't have three square meal on my <laughs> table, prefer square meal, we still have to grapple with this struggle in the system. And somebody is now coming I said, it is just a the comic theater. First thing, said, tell us that the entire SUV you are buying, you are taking that money to a local brand and you are buying that for the Let, Let's police. get Dr. Kerry's uh, uh, perspective on, on this issue now. Well, thank you, Veronica. Clearly, I, I, I'm just wondering that they, they go tough, tough in what that they, they now want to carry guns. Or how. <laughs> because <laughs> the, the issue is not but about perhaps law. Because of our heterogeneous society, they believe that yes. they, we can't keep managing the security apparatus from the center. Is it just the security apparatus that is the issue? The entire structure. But we begin from somewhere, don't yes. we? So, so why not start from the, 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 the one that is more important? You know, the truth is that law or no law, these issues will continue at the moment. Because even the security we are talking about, break them into any level. As long as their interest is not even well taken, how are you so sure that they are even going to protect you? Because we've seen cases of you know, insider arrangements, even from security operatives. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, what, what, how do you intend to deal with this issue? Is it that you want to provide better welfare for the security uh, officials? Or is it that you want to now arm them better? And the more you even arm the chances are that the most sophisticated, they, they, some of them will operate even this so-called... If, they, if know, their welfare is not taken care that of. That is the truth. Mm. You know, because you can't find people in such an environment, if you've been to some of the barracks, mm. and you expect anything better. You know, people who are not able to take care of their children and the rest of it, and you wanted, they see how you move billions. They see how you live your life. And you think that they will be so prepared to do all of that for you. Why they, they go to hell? No, it doesn't work that way. So the first thing is that deal with the structure that is creating all of this. Why should every governor be going to Abuja to collect money? And we call ourselves the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Just, uh, you know, the two days ago we were talking about independence. Well, in actual fact, we are not. You see, so <laughs> dependent, I was say we are independent. Now, the best we have had is that we have self-rule. Yes, self-rule that we see go to people to say, okay, how do we go about it? How do we do it? We see seek permission, more or less. So, deal with that structure that will begin to have states that are functional. Federating are you saying units, re, 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 calling for restructuring in it? Call it any name. The most important is that let us do what is known as federation. At the moment, we are not federating. I've not seen a federation where the national will be sharing money. We'll be controlling money <laughs> and be sharing money. Units. Controlling all the resources in the states. All the mineral resources in the states are, are vested in the federal authority. And that is and where the they come in. That is what makes the problem itself. Mm. Make it a state-based issue. Since it is states that are now federated, let every state operate at its own pace. And at the end of the day, you see competition. Some of the why must it be oil that will drill and gold and the rest are in other places? And those of us who are from oil producing areas are suffering the, the ecological issues. And you keep on making your budget on this. All right? So you don't want the one in other places to be tapped because of the kind of law you've seen so much funds coming from a particular. But at the time you create the enabling environment, every state will become zero. There's no state in Nigeria that cannot pay the minimum wage of thirty thousand. If truly they are meant to operate, we saw how it happened in the 60s. Yes. And that's how the various regions, regions. were competing, Absolutely. how universities were established to create, you know, enabling environment for good governance and the well-being of the people. That was only an initiative that could come from a state that is organized in a manner that people now know what is demanded of them as government. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, we have a loose system where everybody relaxes and waits for money that come and take them away. At the end of the way, you return some of them, you say it's Abacha loot and all of that. Abacha who never traveled is not the one who stash money everywhere in the world. So we must address those issues that are given. And that is why we challenge. say it begins with them. The it's not with security. Security it, is not It begins with the legislature led, amending so, yeah, those laws. They should amend the real ones that matter first because it's, this is security issue you are seeing is only a reaction is a function of something is mm. is symptomatic the real sickness is the structure itself mm. until we have a functional system you continue to have security challenge and like i has rightly mentioned look at the roads how do you now some of them those who are in power they thought that buying suvs is not a way out but we do know that so many of them have even left the suvs they are not boarding train all right <laughs> trains are not being escorted by helicopters and the rest of them let them continue at the end of the day these SUVs they are buying, they might not find that on the road because number one, the roads are bad. Number two, the roads are insecure. That will be waste so of funds. 
they have always been involved in wastages. Mm. So we should look at things that are functional all so right. that we can maximize whatever resources we have for the betterment of all. All right, gentlemen, Dr. Dan Ekere and Obani Akiwali, Akiwali, thank you for your time on really. TVC Breakfast. It's always a pleasure. Let's uh, get into the headlines now, see what uh, the newspapers are saying in Nigeria. And I have with me in the studio from the University of Lagos, Dr. Dan Ekere, as well as our in-house analyst, Obani Akinwale. It's nice to see you both this morning again. Thank you. Great. Blueprint newspaper is where we are starting from this morning and he's dwelling on the $9.6 billion judgment. PNID would have seized our assets globally if uh, the federal government is uh, giving uh, more information there and saying we're doing everything possible to upturn the verdict that Nigeria can demand $200 million uh, uh, refund. The Minister of uh, Justice is saying that. From there, let's go to the News Direct. News Direct is uh, talking about something else and Senate goes tough on kidnappers and banditry. All right. Uh, taking measures to help government uh, look at these issues. Daily Trust is where we go next now. How lecturers shuttle for teaching or to teach in universities. How lecturers shuttle to teach in new universities. Okay, uh, I'm sure certainly we'll discuss this shortly. This day newspaper is the next one now. Stay of execution, evidence of strong case against PID or PNID says the federal government appeals $200 million security for stay, insists PNID bribed Nigerian official with billions of naira to secure failed deal. That's what you see on this day. Vanguard is next. Uproar as federal government returns toll gates to federal roads. It's insensitive anti-people, as the PDP is saying, there's no reason to bring back toll gates. Kakol is saying, and government being unfair. Ex-NBA vice chair is saying this. You can't raise VAT, bring back tolls at the same time. Advocacy Center is saying this. All right. And uh, Daily Sun is where we go next now and uh, is dwelling on alleged pension fraud. EFCC detains Mena after DSS arrest. Ex-director Son pulled a pistol to stall father's arrest. Security agencies are bringing out this information to Nigerians. Okay, gentlemen, uh, let's uh, talk about the story on the front page of the Daily Trust. Daily Trust says how lecturers shuttle to teach in new universities. Now, there are from the breakdown here, it, it, there are about uh, 43 federal universities in Nigeria, there are about 48 state universities, and then there are about 80 private universities. And from the statistics and the report we get, a lot of uh, uh, lecturers, you know, shuttle from one university to the other because there's, there's a shortage. A lot of them have left Nigeria in droves. Dr. Kerry, you are here, and you, that's your constituency. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you have a lot to tell us when it comes to the dangers this might pose, or maybe it's a global phenomenon. I'm sure you even know the dangers yourself. So, <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just like it happened in practically every other profession. We hear doctors, you know, going a serious exodus mm -hmm. of doctors and the rest of it. The same thing has been happening in practically every other field because of the environment in which we work. And now you have new universities. Obviously, you must find hands to do the jobs. Mm -hmm. So some persons must be there. And how do you do it? The only way out is to ensure that at least you get some experienced hands from the already uh, older universities to come in and bring in new ones. So, but at the end of the day, people are equally looking at the various working conditions that exist in all these, uh, you know, universities. You find situations in which some persons have, you know, their promotion has become a spiritual, you know, something. <laughs> that for years, <laughs> even when you are qualified for promotion, it doesn't come. And, all, and you not find an opportunity somewhere else. And perhaps they are even offering you something. But I wonder like how that. this puts yeah. pressure on that one individual. You, a doctor, for instance, yeah. who, who um, lectures in the University of Lagos and then... Maybe because of your um, antecedents, pedigree, knowledge, and exposure, uh, maybe two, three, four private universities want your attention. Exactly. Uh, and then you have to jostle all, all of that. I wonder how you're going to cope. Yeah, uh, and that is equally a function of you, you, even the package you take home, too. Mm. You know, all of that would make you want to do this, do that. And in so some cases... You, you can get yes, up you you know, get and make ends Yeah, it's part of the problem. Obani, <laughs> the, the, in the 80s, 70s and 80s, we saw Nigeria attracting some of the, you know very high 
professionals from India, from Ghana, from parts of Africa in here where we had a lot of them in our universities. What kind of strategies now that government is seeing a lot of professionals, a lot of doctors, professors leaving the country, what kind of <coughs> strategies should be there you know, to attract, either attract them back or attract the best in other African countries into Nigeria? Uh, you know, earlier I said that uh, uh, what we are turning towards as a nation is more of extreme capitalism. Mm. And if you look at the statistics you read out earlier, you said 43 federal university, mm. 48, 48 state, state universities, and 80, 80 private, private universities, universities, which shows clearly that education... And, and there are more licenses lying in the... In it, the uh, it shows the that the, the university education is totally privatized. Exactly. And the reality now is that the schools is for the ISB there. Mm. And if you want to restate, restate, uh, remain in the system, either as lecturers or what have you in the educational system, you have to be where the, uh, the stake is highest. Uh, you go to some of our universities and discover that uh, equipment that has been used since 1970s are still what we are working with. And we're saying we're evolving as a nation, we're churning out graduates, graduates that they are, they are certificated, but they don't seem to have the skills. So what you find out is that what the government is really telling us now is, one, don't go to school. What you need to do best, go and join a political party, contest for councillorship, and that is it. Mm. Because if you still have keen interest in education and you still want to continue to be in academics, the ingredient to sustain the system is not there. Since Yara Duarte not in today, federal government has neither fulfilled its promise to either ASU, NASU, or what have you. Even the staff school that usually uh, was interest of the staff, mm. the federal government is taking it away from the university system. So you can understand that it, it is becoming so obvious that very soon, just like one of the senators said, he said, when the children of the poor find nothing to eat, they will begin to eat children of the rich. And the way it goes now is that education is going to be for the rich, and for the for the for doctor and the likes, for them to keep on oiling the system, they still believe in the system. They need to find a way of enriching themselves mm. academically. And like they said, they said you either you, you either and, and, and in university said you write or you perish. You publish. You publish or you perish. Mm. Now, when you have a system that you don't have what you need to publish, or variably are going to perish. So private university comes in handy, and you can further your research and the money for all those things. So. It's so sad in that our system is more of funding the political class, the elite, and what have you, rather than investing heavily in the education. And All again, right. let me add this, please, mm. that if care is not taken, if care is not taken, what you discover now is that people will just go to universities like the Ankara Market, buy a certificate, and go out, and you find out that we have not have an... an but, but isn't that happening? See, there's <laughs> not between unemployment <laughs> and no skill for employment. What, what, what do you get oh, from oh, many of these neighboring... Unemployability? Many, yes, you see, you go to Benin Republic and go after three years and come back with things that you cannot No, it's yeah, even yeah, being reported fine. that some of, the, you know, some of the houses that are termed universities in some of these countries are not more than two, three buildings where yeah. three persons just come, put together it's some one even, or two things. It's not even just a question of two, three buildings. What about the personnel? Yeah. What, what, what is the quality? You know, because you can run a university in a small place. It might not necessarily be as Jagati as the University of Lagos. Okay. But what is being done there? The that quality, is the of, the, makes the the quality yeah. of people that... All right. We have to leave it here now. Uh, I guess Nigeria has a lot to learn from Rwanda, that uh, private... Uh, we're, uh, not, uh, we're, we're not good at learning, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we have to learn from <laughs> there. All right, Dr. Danikere, thank right. you very much for coming on the program. It's always a pleasure. And uh, Obani Akinwali, thank you very much as well. Bye,